Alright, welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Look at us, we're tracking another major winter storm today. Can you believe it? We got us a twofer, man. I told you we were heading into this active pattern and we are not about to get out of it just yet. It's just starting to ramp up, okay? So today we're going to be talking about our major winter storm that's going to go up the east coast tomorrow. We're going to dive in and take a pretty in-depth look at that. And then we're going to talk about the medium range forecast and talk about all the upcoming opportunities for snow and also our polar vortex or our Arctic blast coming down next week into later this month. So without further ado, let's get right into talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old view of the United States of America. And looky here, we've got our ingredients coming together for our storm right now, just like we thought it would. Here's our rain showers with embedded thunderstorms working through Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, and South Carolina. That's going to keep going north. Also, this little system over here in Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, and Missouri, that's going to help inject some cold air into our East Coast system. And they're going to kind of converge over here in the mid-Atlantic region, and that's the story of how our storm is forming. Now, it's already all snow in Omaha, Nebraska, in southern Iowa, in Kansas City, all the way down into Wichita, and these guys are actually going to get a couple inches of snow out of this, four inches or more for a lot of people, and this snow is going to continue east into St. Louis, Illinois, Chicago is going to get a little bit of snow out of this, Indianapolis, all the way into Kentucky and Ohio, and then it will really amplify in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, as it converges with our energy from the south. Speaking of our energy in the south, here it is. We've got rain from New Orleans all the way up to Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's all rain right now, but a little bit of snow and sleet will start mixing in later on this evening, about six or seven o'clock, especially up here in northern Georgia. And then as it continues to go north, that frozen precipitation will expand a little bit, and we'll, we'll be talking about a snowstorm up here. Okay, let's see what the National Weather Service is up to, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Widespread watches and warnings have been issued in association with our system that we're talking about. Look here, we've got winter storm warnings in Nebraska along the Interstate 80 corridor. Winter storm watch in effect for a broad swath here in the Midwest. And then look to the north here, we've got wind chill warnings and wind chill advisories in effect for much of Minnesota, Wisconsin, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana. That's because our first little blast to Arctic air is coming down after this cold front moves through and it's going to get windy and it's going to get cold up there. So cold in northern Minnesota, in fact, that it could be life-threatening with wind chills as low as negative 50 degrees. <laughs> And then, of course, we've got our winter storm watches and warnings in effect for uh, people along the East Coast for our next major winter storm that we're going to start talking about in depth right now. All right, let's take a look at the high resolution NAM model, shall we? Oh boy, here it comes. We're putting it into motion. 3 p.m. today, we've got thunderstorms breaking out in Florida. And there is actually a slight risk for severe weather today in Florida with a little bit of an increased risk for tornadoes today. I think a 2% risk. And in fact, if we zoom in on Florida here, you can really see those storms very well. This is around 5 p.m. today. This first batches, the ones that we really need to keep our eye on for the potential for cyclonic rotation. Then you're going to have off and on storms all through the night as our winter storm moves on. As you can see, our storms do have some convective energy to work with and also some shear. So the ingredients are there. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But if you live in Florida, you're not worried about snow with this storm. You're worried about severe weather and tornadoes, which a lot of times can be a whole lot more serious. So keep an eye on that. Okay, so we're zoomed back out. We're going to put this back into motion. 6 p.m. tonight, we've got moderate to heavy snow breaking out across Missouri, all the way as far as south as uh, into northern Arkansas and we've got a little bit of that snow trying to switch over here in northern Georgia in the mountains of North Carolina and a little bit of Alabama and central Tennessee here heavy rain and thunderstorms moving north and east through central Georgia let's keep putting this into motion a changeover from rain to snow tries to occur here in central Tennessee this happened a little bit quicker on earlier models so I think some of the snow totals uh, for Tennessee are going to be lower now and then let's keep pushing this forward watch it break out we've got heavy snow now in central Tennessee west of Knoxville and that breaks out all the way into southeastern Kentucky, Hazard, Middlesbrough, Pikeville, Kentucky, Prestonsburg. By 1 a.m. tonight, Sunday, it's going to be snowing heavily for us, but it will be brief. Watch, as I put this into motion, everything really tries to hightail out of here before the morning hours. Here we are at 5 a.m. We do have heavy snow across all of southeastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, and North Carolina, but the bulk of the action is now in West Virginia, Northern Virginia, and it's working into Maryland. The 12Z suite of the models have moved this back north and west a little bit, which is always to be expected. There's always a little bit of that northwest shift right at the end, I, I feel like anyways. So that means that our pesky rain snow line is going to be further north, and that is bad news for people in the I-95 corridor, people in the Delmarva Peninsula, Delaware itself, Southern Jersey. If you want snow, it's going to be a battle with those warm temperatures, just like it always is. And then let's keep putting this into motion. Look at here, though. We have actual thunderstorms running up into cold air here, causing potentially 
potentially thunder snow in Washington, D.C. If I lived in D.C., Baltimore, Northern Virginia, I would be on the lookout for thunder snow on Sunday, especially in the morning, because we've got thunderstorms running into that cold air, and uh, it's going to be snowing hard, and there's definitely the opportunity for some lightning and some thunder. And if it's at all possible, please take a video of it and send it to me, because I love seeing that stuff. I've never experienced thunder snow for myself in real life. I just have to live vicariously through you guys. <laughs> <laughs> when my truck gets fully ready, my storm chasing truck gets fully ready, I'm going thunder snow chasing. All right, anyways, we do have heavy snow through northern and western Virginia, also in West Virginia and Maryland and northern Delaware now. Let's keep putting that into motion. The heavy snow bands really are going to train over D.C. and Baltimore. If this was just a little bit of a slower moving system, you guys would see a ton of snow from this. However, you're going to see it fall. It, you are going to see it fall. It is going to be snow town baby for like a couple hours. <laughs> and then now that heavy snow is moving into southeastern Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, York, Pennsylvania. And then it's going to keep on moving into northern New Jersey by around 10 a.m. tomorrow. And it eventually gets all the way to the coast of New Jersey. And once again, we're talking about heavy snow here with the potential for thunder snow embedded in here as those really heavy rain bands slam into cold air and become uh, thunder snowstorms. And we do have a moderate precipitation shield all the way through central Pennsylvania, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire. But the heaviest of the stuff will be concentrated pretty tightly down here in Connecticut. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Looks like Cape Cod's going to get in on some extremely heavy snow. 3 p.m. on Sunday, 4 p.m. on Sunday, 5 p.m. on Sunday. Um, as you can see, it's starting to move out of this area now, and we're moving to the north and east, and then it's going to hightail the heck out of here and be completely gone by 11 p.m. Uh, with just some leftover moderate snow showers in Maine. Well, how much is it going to dag on snow, Ryan? Well, that's actually kind of hard to tell uh, with this storm. I'm going to do my best. Don't get me wrong. Okay, so we're going to dive in real close here in just a second, but let's take a broad view real quick. Here's our swath of heaviest snows. As you can see, compared to yesterday's video, um, this whole area is less intense than what we saw. This has walked waffled back and forth between a very significant snowstorm, a moderate snowstorm, a little pipsqueak nothing snowstorm, and then back up to a giant snowstorm. And now we're back to, you know, it's still a major snowstorm. There's going to be major impacts, especially up here in the Northeast, but it's less widespread and it's less significant. That's for sure. We've got a trace of snow possible as far south as just north of Atlanta. A little bit of snow here in northern Alabama, northeastern Mississippi. And then with that little Arctic system, that Arctic front that comes through a lot of the Ohio Valley and Midwest could see up to an inch of snow, obviously with concentrated higher amounts over here with those heavier bands of snow we were just looking at on the radar. Now let's zoom into our most affected areas here. We are in Kentucky and Tennessee. One to three inches is still very likely in southeastern Kentucky from Pikeville down into Middlesboro, Hazard, Prestonsburg. You guys can see one to three inches of snow pretty easy. There are some increased totals possible here for north central Tennessee. This is showing areas with possibly up to nine or ten inches of snow. I do think that's a little bit overdone, but I do think that this area can see um, closer to five inches of snow or more. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Knoxville, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge in the valleys here get shafted due to the valley effect, but up in the mountains, you can still see quite a bit of snow from this. And then as we move off to the east a little bit, northwestern North Carolina in the mountains can see over four inches of snow, but in the valleys, we're talking about one or two inches, maybe just a trace. A lot of southern West Virginia can see two to four inches, but here in the mountains of Virginia, we're talking about over a foot possible north of Blacksburg, Virginia. And as we get over here closer to Roanoke, once again, in the mountains over a foot, in the valleys, maybe up to six inches. This really starts to ramp up from Lynchburg over to Charlottesville, five or six inches of snow possible with embedded areas of over seven inches of snow. And we've just got a broad swath of six to eight inches of snow possible for central and northern Virginia here. Taking a look at Maryland, five, six inches possible in the DC Baltimore area. Hagerstown, Maryland is the winner. Once again, they've just got a snow magnet up there with, you know, close to eight inches of snow possible. And that little streak goes on up into York, Pennsylvania. This area right here, once again, is where some of the heaviest snow could fall. But the problem is it's just going to be brief. Look out for blinding snow fall rates from Washington all the way up to Philadelphia, but it will go by fast. Speaking of Philadelphia, we're talking about six, seven, possibly eight inches of snow up there. A lot of eastern Pennsylvania near Allentown. You guys are not going to get 30 inches of snow once again from this. Uh, we're talking about five, maybe six inches all the way out to the coast here on New Jersey. Tom's River, five, six inches is possible. And that three to six inch rain 
range goes all the way out close to Scranton, Pennsylvania into upstate New York, just south of Albany. But in Albany, you can still expect about two inches of snow. New York City looks like they're going to get about seven or eight inches of snow. But as you go farther east out onto Long Island, we're talking about close to 11 inches of snow out here near Southampton. Massachusetts is the big winner from this storm, especially over here in the Cape. This looks like a redemption storm for everybody who got shafted in our last storm. I know a lot of people in eastern Massachusetts got rain uh, when they were forecasted to get a lot of snow. I think this is definitely going to be a snow event for you guys out here on the tip of the Cape. You can expect to get over 10 inches of snow. Boston, we're talking about seven or eight inches of snow. Um, and much of eastern Massachusetts could see well over eight inches of snow if everything goes right. Over eight inches of snow for the entire state of Rhode Island. And we're talking about a broad swath of over six inches in Connecticut. And looky here, Maine, the Adirondacks point west and the White Mountains and the Green Mountains are not hogging up all the snow. The snow is actually going to be on the coast near Portland out here in eastern Maine. We're talking about over a foot of snow here in extreme eastern Maine. That's an odd snow map for Maine. <laughs> Usually it's all up here. So that's about all we know from this system right now. I was originally thinking about maybe going live tonight for this storm, but I'm not 100% sure right now. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see me go live. If I don't though, don't worry. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for live streams in the near future because we got some stuff going on. Let's check that out. Okay, here's the GFS. All right, we're going to take a look at the medium range forecast now. And we've got our polar vortex just hanging out up here in Canada. It's waiting to inject some cold air down here further into the United States. Don't get me wrong. It is here in Minnesota in the Great Lakes region, but I do think it's going to keep going south. Let's watch that happen. Additionally, we have more storm systems trying to fire up as that cold air tries to come south. Look here on February 9th, we have some mixed precipitation showing up in Arkansas all the way through eastern Kentucky, and that might try to form a storm here and go off to the north and east. Actually, look how prolonged that frozen precipitation is here in eastern Kentucky, western Tennessee, down in Arkansas. That would be a pretty significant ice storm, and that's on February 10th through the 11th. And then that does try to form a storm. Here we are on the 12th with another, you know, possibly major snowstorm on the East Coast. But the headline here is this. This is the polar vortex. This is a lobe of the polar vortex or a very intense surface high bringing down that 540 line all the way down into Louisiana. When these thermal lines are really close together, that means that the cold air is really coming down. We get that 540 line as far south as Louisiana, actually pretty often this time of year. Uh, but usually the 522 line is way back up here. So we are getting some thick cold air, some real Arctic air coming down from Canada, according to the GFS. And this is February 12th, so we're not that far out. And that does try to continue sinking as far south as Mobile, Alabama. And we've got really, really cold air up here in the Great Lakes region with some lingering snow, some lake effect snow machines going on. And it's really going to pile up with that cold air in place. And now we're going in past February 14th into the 15th. And we've got another storm popping up here. Look at that heavy snow in northern Arkansas moving into Tennessee. Tennessee, Kentucky, and then that kind of gets eaten up by our polar flow. And then we've got another storm showing up for the 21st and 22nd of February that looks like a severe weather event actually for the Midwest. But that will obviously change as we go into the future. The main things we should be paying attention to um, is the formation of the second storm here and the progression of our polar vortex as it heads south. That's going to give us multiple opportunities for big snowstorms as we go forward. I know a lot of you guys want to be in Snowtown, and the ingredients are there, man, especially if you're from northeastern Texas all the way up into to the northeast region um, unfortunately the southeast i think the, the the possibilities are a little bit less for you i think you're going to be in a little bit of a warm ridge but if you're riding that boundary from in this circle right here buddy whoo, whoo, we're talking about snow town maybe again all right let's talk about them temperatures as we go forward as that cold air really starts to come down you can see it start peeling through the ohio valley and low temperatures on february 13th are going to be significantly low oh buddy we're talking about negative 35 degrees in minnesota without wind chills whoo Woo! <laughs> We're talking about negative temperatures all the way down into central Kansas, close to negative 20 degrees across much of Ohio, Indiana, Chicago's negative 22, single digit temperatures pretty close to Atlanta, Georgia, Huntsville, Alabama's three degrees, and that does stick with us into the next day, and it actually uh, spreads a little bit further south. Now we've got single digit temperatures in southern Georgia, it's negative 21 degrees in Lexington, Kentucky, and it also progresses a little bit further east. This is February 14th at 7 a.m. We're talking about negative 10 to negative 20 degrees across much of Pennsylvania, New England. This is cold air, the coldest air we have seen in a long time. So get ready 
for that. All right, guys, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you live on the East Coast, I hope you're ready for our next winter storm. And once again, as always, if you live somewhere where something interesting happens, like if you get seven or eight inches of snow, snap a picture or a video of it and send it to me on Twitter or in our official Discord. That's right, we have a Discord page. There's a link in the description. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you never miss a video or a live stream. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching my videos. I'll see you later, maybe tonight, maybe for a live stream. But if not, I'll definitely see you tomorrow, all right? We'll see you. Goodbye. Whoop.